What is Ectrans? To answer this question, we need to go back to one man. Professor Otto R. Hommes. Otto was a uh, very lively and inspiring uh, figure. He was very tall, with very large hands. Always dressed in a long white uh, doctor's coat. I remember him with a bell. Asking the people to go into the uh, room one minute before the time. White trousers, white shoes, long hair. Often with a bow tie. He was often smiling. And with a very serious uh, person, uh, with a lot of discipline. Uh, and there you could sense his, his passion and his vision for the, for the future. Born in 1932 in a small town in West Friesland, Otto Hommers studied medicine in Amsterdam and Utrecht. After obtaining his doctorate in 1957, Otto Hommers went on to specialize in neurology and psychiatry before taking a position at the Radboud University Medical Center in Nijmegen. Otto was an open-minded man whose unconventional approach to research was often reflected in his lectures. He had always a very inspiring uh, way of um, combining philosophical considerations with personalized uh, presentation of clinical cases in his lectures. You could have been expecting a specific topic on a specific lecture, but then he brought in a patient who was by coincidence on the ward at that moment. And he thought it would be very more valuable to hear the story of that patient. And uh, didn't want to behave like an old professor uh, telling boring old stories, but always looking for uh, new ideas. As Otto focused both his clinical and scientific work on multiple sclerosis, being ahead of his time was something that defined his career. In the early 1970s, he was one of the first to use immunosuppressants to treat MS, as well as recognizing very early on what was needed to accelerate progress. He was optimistic at a time when not many people believed in that. And uh, made it clear that uh, bringing people together, working together, improves and speed up uh, the uh, process of finding a cure uh, for multiple sclerosis. And when new concepts meet, uh, something new will appear. In the search for new solutions, the value of debating new experiences in treating the disease was clear. And in 1977, Otto Hommers brought together neurologists from different countries for what was to be his first conference. It, it's a CAC conference in Nijmegen, what's called Multiple Sclerosis Research in Europe, MSRE. Five years later, he did it again, bringing together in Nijmegen 50 active participants, including MS neurologists from both Europe and the United States. By 1985, with the somewhat unwieldy name, Ectrims was born. European Committee for Treatment and Research in Multiple Sclerosis. Is this some sort of test? <laughs> <laughs> While still very small compared with today, early meetings were embraced by participants. Dear colleagues, I'm very happy Everyone could immediately see the value of Otto's vision for accelerating progress. I remember myself uh, discussing with a very distinguished uh, professor. I was presenting a poster. I was uh, definitely extremely anxious. Uh, I was trying to convince him, I was naive, I was young, that uh, I knew the, the, the cause and the mechanism of multiple sclerosis. And I remember him being very patient with me and, uh, and trying to convince me that perhaps there are other possible mechanisms uh, producing multiple sclerosis. I had this European huge audience for the first time in my life, but it went well. I remember being very proud uh, in front of my posters and having all these, uh, I would say, famous neurologists for me coming to ask me questions. And this gave me a sense of uh, self-confidence. <laughs> Thanks to the dedication and hard work of many of the leading figures in the world of MS research and treatment, and every president and committee, Ectrims evolved and grew year upon year. Tens to uh, hundreds. Two thousand. Three thousand. Seven thousand. Somewhere between nine and ten thousand participants. 
And with that, Ectrims has become a driving force to improve basic and clinical research and clinical outcomes in multiple sclerosis on a worldwide scale. It's gone from being a small meeting of the chosen few in, in a small venue with a dinner in the back of a, of a pub to a huge meeting. Ectrims um, uh, has become the most suitable venue uh, for exchanging knowledge uh, on emerging treatments. Not only concentrated on the diagnosis, uh, immunopathogenesis and of course treatment. Uh, the type of participants uh, have uh, expanded, psychologists, uh, physiotherapists, nurses uh, and uh, other healthcare professionals. And with this evolution, Ectrims now offers so much more than just the annual meeting. The patient community day, summer school, annual scientific workshops, webinars, a huge fellowship program, podcast. Expanding from three to 365 days a year and working together with other Trims organizations who share the same goals. And also the relationship of Ectrims increased quite a lot uh, with other Trims societies that share the same mission, the same goals. And the partnering it has done just enhances, enhances that and really makes it even more effective. By the of there is cross the global collaboration on, on a level he wouldn't have dreamed of. The fact that there are so many young people and many established uh, MS researchers connecting and discussing with each other. New methods, uh, new molecules, uh, new concepts, new ideas. New treatment algorithms, he, he would have loved that. And as we look to the future, to the next generation of leaders, and to how we continue to impact the lives of people living with MS and associated diseases. Actrims will continue striving to create connection, to foster synergies. From where we were with a completely untreatable disease to where we are now. So what I would say to Ectrims going forward is don't take your foot off the pedal. There's an awful lot to be done and we are in a very good position to deliver on that. And this is Ectrims.